This is how you can make an advanced words per minute typing test with your Discord.js version 14 bot, so let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super or god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get the god tier subscription on Discord. We also have the bot tier, which is the full zip file of the exact bot used in the tutorial videos. You can also get three bot packages, which are fully coded Discord bots based on a specific topic. Topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested and with that let's go ahead and get into the code All right So the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go over to commands and we can go ahead and create a new command called words per minute.js The first thing that we're gonna do in here is get our dependencies So that's going to be our slash command builder embed builder action row builder button builder button style and our attachment builder all from the discord.js package and then we're gonna go ahead and get canvas or create canvas from the canvas package we do not actually need load image so don't type that in next we're gonna go ahead and do module that exports we can go ahead and open this up we're gonna go ahead and get all of our parameters for this command so we're gonna go ahead and get data new slash command builder we're gonna set the name of the command to typing speed test the description run a typing speed test we're going to add an integer option with the name words with the description of how many words you want to be in the test or however you want to phrase that. Uh, we can set a minimum value of 10 and a maximum value of 25 and we can set that to required. Then we can go ahead and do async executes. We can go ahead and get our interaction and let's go ahead and open this up. So we can go ahead and start off by doing const word count equals interaction dot options to get integer and we're going to get our words. Then we can go ahead and do const words and we're gonna go ahead and get an array here. This is an array of a decent amount of words. Um, if you would like to get this on your own, you can actually go ahead and uh, type in a prompt into ChatGPT asking for a JavaScript array of 100 simple words or something like that. Um, or you could write this out. Um, I'm sure you can also find stuff like this on the internet. It doesn't quite matter uh, the exact words that you use as long as you have a decent word pool that your bot can actually choose from. Um, in a random number generator. So now that we have our words array, let's go ahead and send a reply. So we're gonna do await interaction dot reply, and we're gonna get our content, and let's go ahead and get an emoji. Uh, then we can go ahead and say your typing test is starting, and we can do three dots, and we're also gonna go ahead and set informal to false. That way everyone can see it. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and do var output words equals a empty string. We can go ahead and do var output word array, and that's going to be an empty array. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a for loop, so we're gonna do a i equals zero, and we can do i is less than our word count, and then we can go ahead and do i plus plus. Within this for loop, let's go ahead and get a random number, so we can do const random num equals math.floor, and then we can do math.random, uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and multiply it by words.length, just like that. That way we can go ahead and get a random number between uh, the first index of our array and the last. So we're encompassing the entire array within our random number. Next, let's go ahead and do if, and we can do i, and we can use the modulus operator five is equal to zero. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and check to see if i is greater than zero. We can open this up and we're gonna do output words. Uh, and we're gonna do plus equals, and then we can do a backslash n. And then we're also gonna go ahead and create a new variable up here. We can do var control equals one. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and do control plus plus as well. Uh, and then outside of that, we can go ahead and do output words, and we can actually do plus equals, uh, and we're gonna do words, and we can go ahead and pass in our random num, and then we can do plus a string just like that. And we can also do output word array, um, and we can do our index here, and then we can do equals words of our random num. So we're gonna go ahead and set the index to our random number, uh, just like that. So essentially what we're doing within this for loop uh, is we're gonna go and get a random number like I mentioned, and we're gonna first check to see if our loop control variable is a multiple of five, which means it's either gonna be 10, 15, 20, or 25, because our minimum value is 10 and our maximum value is 25. Um, and then if it is, it's going to add a break within our output word string. So what that's gonna mean is that each line within the string is going to have five words until we get to the end if we have um, a 
number that is not a multiple of five, then we'll have a line with less than five words, but that doesn't really matter. So basically we're just breaking up our word string uh, using a little bit of logic with our variables. And then down here, we just basically set our variables that we can use later. Then let's go ahead and do const canvas, and we're gonna go ahead and get a bunch of canvas variables here. So we're gonna create a canvas, um, we're gonna go ahead and set the first number to 5,000, and then the second is going to be the height of the canvas, which is going to be 500 times control. That way the height of the image that we're gonna go ahead and send is flexible depending on how many lines we actually have. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get a CTX, uh, which is going to be canvas.getContent, and it's gonna be 2D. We're gonna do CTX as set font to 300 PX Arial. We're gonna set the fill style to red, and we're gonna set the fill text to output words, zero, and then we can do canvas.height divided by our control as well. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get our attachment. So we're gonna go ahead and render this canvas into an attachment. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do canvas.toBuffer, and then we're gonna go ahead and set the name to image.png. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a promise. So we can do wait new promise, and we're gonna go ahead and resolve it, and we can go ahead and set a timeout. Let's do resolve, and we can do 2000 just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and set a two second timeout here. That way we make sure everything renders in before we actually start the countdown, and it gives a loading effect, which is kind of cool in the actual output. Next, let's go ahead and do wait interaction dot channel and we can do dot send and we're gonna go ahead and say starting in. Then we're gonna go ahead and do another for loop so we can do four uh, and then we can do i equals three and we can do i is not equal to zero and then we're gonna decrement i uh, all the way down to zero. Then we can do await interaction dot channel dot send and we're gonna go ahead and send an empty string plus i just like that um, and actually I wrote this in Java first, so I don't think we actually need the empty string. We can just take that out. Then we can go ahead and do wait new promise, and we're gonna do resolve, and we can open this up again. So we're gonna go ahead and set another timeout. This time, we're just gonna set it for a second, which is gonna be 1000 milliseconds. Next, we can go ahead and do await interaction.channel.send, and we're gonna do go, just like that. So now we have our countdown. Let's go ahead and handle the actual getting the words per minute that the user sends, and then calculating the words per minute from the time it took to get the words and the accuracy of the words as well. So this is gonna be the algorithmic part uh, of this command. But actually before we do that, we need to send the attachment and we need to send a starting message. So we're gonna send content as nothing, files as attachment, and then we're gonna edit our reply saying your typing speed test has started. And we're gonna send formal to false on that as well. So now we can actually go in and start. So let's do const start and we're gonna do equals date dot now. Uh, now we can go ahead and do const collector equals interaction.channel.create message collector. And we're going to go ahead and set the time to 120,000. And we're going to do the exact same thing below, but this time it's going to be a button collector and we're going to create a message component collector, same time as well. Now we're going to go ahead and list a few variables. So we can do var complete equals false. We can do var elapsed equals zero. We can do var correct words equals zero. We can do var msg equals nothing. We can do var words per minute equals zero. Now we're going to go ahead and turn our collector on. So we can do collector dot on and we're going to go ahead and collect and we can do async m and we can go ahead and open this up. So that's going to be our message. Then we're gonna do if, and we can do m.author.id equals our interaction.user.id. We can open that up. Within this, we're gonna do const end equals date.now. We can do elapsed, and we can do equals. We're gonna do end minus start, and we're gonna divide that by 1000. That way we can uh, go ahead and put that into seconds, I believe. Then we're gonna do four, and we can do i equals zero. Uh, we can go ahead and do i is less than word counts. Then we can go ahead and do i plus plus. Let's go ahead and do if, and we're gonna say m.content.includes, and we're gonna do our output word array, and we're gonna go ahead and do i. Then we can go ahead and open this up. We're gonna do correct words plus plus, just like that. We're gonna come outside that loop, and we can say if correct words uh, is less than our word count divided by two. We're gonna go ahead and send a couple of messages. So we can go ahead and say uh, in the channel, try again, this time be sure to be more accurate. And then we're gonna edit our reply saying your typing test is complete. 
Now, what we're doing here is we're basically saying if the correct words is uh, less than 50%, which means you basically didn't get anything right, it's less than 50% credit, uh, then we're not going to calculate the words per minute because it's not going to be accurate if you didn't get any of them right anyways. Then we can go ahead and say else, and we're going to open this up. Here, we're actually going to go in and do the calculations, but first, let's go ahead and instantiate a button. So we can do const button equals new action row builder. We're going to add components, which is going to be new button builder. We're going to set the custom ID to speed test info. We're going to set a label to get stats. We're going to set the style to button style.primary. Now we can go in and set some of our variables. So we can do words per minute equals math.floor. And we're going to do correct words divided by elapsed. Uh, and then we can do divided by 60. Uh, then we're going to do message equals await interaction dot channel dot send. And we're going to do content. And then we can get a emoji here and we can say your words per minute is and then we can get our words per minute variable in these ticks here. Then we're going to set components as our button, which we uh, set in our variable above. Below that, we're going to go ahead and say await interaction.edit reply, and we're going to say your uh, typing test is complete. That's going to be the same message that we sent up here. We're going to send that in both cases. Then we're going to do collector.stop, and we can go in and stop that, and we're going to do complete equals true. Okay, so moving on, we can go ahead and do our button collector. So we're going to do button collector.on, and we're going to go in and do collect. Let's go in and async and interaction. So this button is basically just going to go ahead and get some stats on your typing tests, like the percentage accuracy and your words per minute uh, all formatted nicely. So let's go ahead and get our accuracy percent. So we can do const accuracy percent and then we can do equals and we're going to do correct words divided by word count. And then we can multiply that by 100. Then we're going to do if I dot custom ID equals and we can do speed test info. That's going to be the custom ID from above. Then we can open this up and we're going to go ahead and send our reply, which is going to be i.reply. And then we can say content. We're going to get test time with emoji. We can do elapsed uh, and we can say seconds. And then we can do a backslash n and then we can say accuracy and we can do some ticks. And we're going to go ahead and do correct words divided by our word count or we're going to do our accuracy percent. Then we're going to go in and set informal to true and we're going to go in and catch an error. It's always good practice to catch an error uh, when doing these kinds of things. That way, if you get a Discord API error, it's not going to crash your bot. After that, we just have to do two more things. We're going to go ahead and turn on our button collector just to end it. We're going to say if no message, we're going to return. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and edit and we're going to say your words per minute is and we're going to get our WPM. We're going to set components to nothing and again, we're going to catch an error. Uh, and then below that, we're going to set a timeout. We're going to go ahead and say, if not complete, then we're going to go ahead and reply and edit the reply actually to your typing test is invalid. And we're going to send formal to false on that. So I know it's kind of a lot and it's a little bit complicated, but that is the words per minute typing test command. So let's go ahead and save the file, restart the bot and test this out. Now, before we actually do, I know I went ahead and changed this in the writing of this code, but let's go ahead and actually make it a string again. So now let's go ahead and save the file, restart the bot and test this out. All right, over in our Discord, we can go in and use our typing test command. So let's go ahead and try to put in nine words. And as you can see, it's going to make sure we use a number between 10 and 25. That's going to make sure our logic works. We can go ahead and do 10 to start, but I do want to say that the words you use shouldn't impact the words per minute you get. There might be a little bit of variation, um, and if you use like lower words, the words per minute might be a little bit higher, um, but it shouldn't be like that significant to the point where it would make the test inaccurate. So we can go ahead and do 10, and it's going to say it's starting. So this is our start sequence that we wrote out. So keep in mind, it just rendered the image, and now it's going to go ahead and start it and go ahead and send the image. So now if we do the words per minute test and we go ahead and send it, as you can see, it's going to go ahead and immediately say uh, my words per minute, and it's going to go ahead and edit this message saying the typing test is complete. We can also go ahead and get our stats. It's going to go ahead and say it took me about 10 seconds, um, and it's going to say I have 100% accuracy, which is pretty cool. Now, I do want to point out how this image actually worked. Like I said, we use the modules operator uh, with our loop control variable to determine um, when we go ahead and break. So if it's a multiple of five, that means we've used five words. That's when we're going to go ahead and break. And then we're going to go ahead and write out the next five. Now, because we use 10, it made it kind of nice. Now we have five on each line. But this time, let's go ahead and use a non-multiple. So we could do like 17. Um, and if we go ahead and start it here, now, as you can see here, um, the first three lines are going to be uh, five, and then the last one is just going to be two. 
that would make sense because it's going to be 5, 10, 15, and then we have to add 2 to get to 17. So that's how uh, the image works. So I also want to point out we um, modified the word string to make it look like this, but what we also did was we made the image size bigger. So in this image, if we hover over it, as you can see, the image itself uh, is not as high. It doesn't have as big of a height as the image down here. This image is much bigger. And the reason for that is because we use our control variable to determine the height of the image based on the amount of words and amount of word breaks we have. So it's pretty accurate and it works um, for the range that we've allowed it. Let's do one more test. This time, let's go ahead and do the maximum um, number of words and that way we can see our image generation. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and try to do this test to see what we get. Now we actually got an interesting response here. So it initially said try again, this time try to be more accurate, but that wouldn't make sense because otherwise this wouldn't send. So what I think ended up happening was, uh, even though it said it's invalid um, for this typing test or one of the typing tests above, uh, it actually went ahead and um, use this message for that test and as you can see the invalid message was edited out of this one uh, so that would make sense it might be a little bit glitchy if you use uh, two uh, different tests at the same time um, but something you could do is in the code here as you can see we have a button collector that ends you could also make um, a collector that would go ahead and end after a specified period of time and that way uh, the entire thing will shut off um, but there's not really much you could do about that in this case. Now, as you can see, we waited a little bit of time and um, our collector has actually shut off. So now we can't access these stats. All right, so this time I ran a test and I misspelled two words on purpose, these two right here. So if we go ahead and get our stats this time, it's gonna say eight out of 10, which will make sense because we misspelled only two words and it's gonna give us our time. So it's gonna be an 80% accuracy. And what's interesting is even though we did this pretty quickly, um, because we didn't have a perfect accuracy, our words per minute is gonna go ahead and drop. So your words per minute is going to be relative based off of your accuracy and your time. All right, so that's how you can make an advanced words per minute or typing test command using your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.